Hey guys, I want to make a video and we're going to call this Setting the Record Straight, Turning the Pyramid Upside Down. Now open to Mark chapter 10 verses 42 through 45. I'm going to write that up here for you. Mark chapter 10. Let's see if I'm on the board still. <laughs> 42 through 45. So Mark chapter 10 verses 42 through 45. I'm going to switch to a black marker. That doesn't show up very well. Okay. So right there in verse 42 he says, You know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship. So we're going to have two main phrases here that are going to be very important. Exercise Lordship and Exercise Authority. So, Exercise Lordship in verse 42 and Exercise Authority in verse 42. So, what we're going to look at is right here how it says, he says, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. It's not going to be this way. You're not going to be set up like the, the Gentiles Gentiles. Now, this word Gentiles in the scripture is often rendered heathen, or it'll be rendered. The idea of Gentile is a heathen, but it'll say nations. So sometimes this word will be rendered Gentile, and sometimes it will be rendered nations, and Gentile just means a heathen. So, holding your place right here. I want you to open to 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this. I hope you have written that down or marked that down. So now we're going to 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. And in verse 5, it says, so we'll start in verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah <coughs> and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the Gentiles. If you look that up in the Strong's Concordance there, that word nations means Gentiles. In verse 5, nations, that word means Gentiles. They were asking for a king to judge over them like the Gentile king. Now, Jesus, why is he saying this over here in Mark chapter 10? Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. So over here in 1 Samuel 8, they're asking for a king like the Gentiles. And it says, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. Samuel prayed unto Yahweh, and Yahweh said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, Samuel, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Okay, so right there in that little text, you see that God says that they haven't rejected you, Samuel, they have rejected me, God says. Yahweh. 
Yahweh says, ye, right, one, one second, so, he says, they have rejected me, that I should not, let me see, that I should not, Reign over them. Reign. So what it's saying is they've rejected him from being king. They don't want God to be king. They want a man king. They're asking for a man to be king rather than God. That's insane. What's it, it's so interesting that people don't even know this concept in Scripture. It's, I mean, it's the very first things that ever happened. So, if you open with me to Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, in verse 4, the serpent says, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day Ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Shall be as gods. Knowing good and evil. Okay. So this is a very important verse in Scripture, and that's Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Verse 5. Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. Now, in this rebellion of Adam and Eve, they became known as the gift givers of mankind. Adam and Eve, in their fallen state, became known as the benevolent gift givers of mankind. Because now, in rebellion, with a rebellious heart, rebellious heart, man could openly rebel against God. They were the leaders of rebellion. That's the way that men today do the same things. God says not to do something, like He did in Genesis chapter 2. He said, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Any other tree you may freely eat. And they say, well, we'll eat of it anyways. And that's also why the serpent Nakash Nakash became identified with these Adam and Eve and, and the, the serpent. And we'll see uh, the way that that applies because it's a false doctrine. The false doctrine is that man can be king. So Jesus in Mark 10 is telling them, you're not going to be king. It's not going to be this way among you. If you open to Mark 10 again and look there. So let's open again to Mark chapter 10, verse 42. Or verse 43. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you. Shall be your servant. Minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest. Shall be slave of all. For even the son of man. Came not to be served. But to serve. And to give his life a ransom for many. So keep that word Nakash right there in mind. Nakash, the word for serpent, because now we're going to open to 1 Samuel chapter 8 again. O open back to 1 Samuel chapter 8 now. 1 Samuel chapter 8, he says, they've rejected God from being king. They don't want, or it's not like they could do that. They just, God, they don't want God to rule over them. They want a man king, just like the lie that Nakash gave them, the serpent, was that they could be gods. Now, God, God's there in Genesis chapter 
he, in Genesis chapter 3, is the word Elohim. Now, El means strength. Or El means strength. Strength. Elohim means strengths, plural, strengths, with an S. And that's where, if you've ever heard the term, pluralis, this is the Greek term, pluralis majestatis, majestatis, majestatis. That's a Latin phrase, it means plural in majesty, plural in majesty. And that's also where you get the saying, the royal we. Pluralis majestatis, plural in majesty, the royal we. Elohim comes from El, which means strength. Elo, Elohim, plural, that I-Y-M on the end of a Hebrew word means plural, strengths. It, and they will tell you that it means judge Judge, sorry, I forgot the D. It means judge or magistrate. Magistrate, a judge. Trust in the Lord, lean not in thine own understanding. It says that, and, and that's what faith is. Faith means trust. So trust in the Lord. That's what faith is, not in your own decision-making ability, but in God's decision-making for you. God is sovereign. I'll go ahead and write that over here. Sovereign. That means He makes the planets go round. He makes the sun stay in its orbit. He created the, the heavens and the earth. He created the grass outside. He created our ancestors. He created these birds and these cows and these other animals ancestors. He created water that we can drink. He created the firmament. He created everything. He created the universe. So that word nakash there that was used for serpent in Genesis chapter 3 nakash now open with me to 1 Samuel chapter 8 again. He says according to all the 1 Samuel chapter 8 verse 8 he says, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods. Other gods, like Adam and Eve, man gods, right? That's why they wanted a king. They wanted their own judge. Judge. Right? Judge and magistrate. Magistrate. Isn't that what... We just said that the definition of Elohim is coming from El meaning strength. Elohim means strengths. And then they'll say it means judge or magistrate. <clears throat> and that's what they say, right? Go back to 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 5. Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge. Us like all the heathen Gentile nations. <laughs> And that's why Jesus says, you're not going to be like the, the Gentiles with the kings. And then God right here is telling them, that's a bad choice that y'all are making to ask for a man king instead of, a, instead of me as king. And that's exactly what the whole story of 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles is. Is messing up big time by asking for a man king. He says, now therefore hearken unto their voice, how be it, yet Protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Now, the, it goes on. <clears throat> it, 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 now, in verses 10. So, 1 Samuel, 